Lynn Lugley Main was born Travis Miller on May the 13th, 1984 in Richmond, Virginia. Not much is known about Travis's childhood, and most of what I found are snippets from various old interviews and rumours from random people on Reddit, so take it all with a grain of salt. Travis would become fascinated by puppets, cartoons and the circus, and would continue to show passion for these as he grew up, including cartoonish elements in a lot of the art he would create. Travis would drop out of high school and begin to experiment with music. Hip-hop wouldn't be his first genre however, he would experiment with many genres such as black metal, industrial and noise. Many of these earlier projects are lost media, but some have been released by Travis within new projects. Some of his earlier work included black metal projects under the aliases Vudmerk and Sadir, as well as the aforementioned industrial and noise projects under Across, Public Garden and Rats. It wouldn't be until the mid-2000s that Travis would begin making hip-hop music. His flurry into this genre began with the underground hip-hop group The Legacy, in which Travis would rap under the moniker Young Gus. You can find an 11 and a half minute compilation of some of the Legacy's music on YouTube. In 2010, Travis would join the hip hop collective Chocolate Milk Collective under the name Sean Kemp. This alias would also be credited for scoring an infomercial for slippery syrup vape juice and would become his beat creator alias. 2010 would also be the year in which the Little Ugly Main moniker would start being used as he would begin to release singles under the alias around this time. Travis would begin receiving a small buzz around the time mainly due to his collaborations with Raider Clan. Raider Clan are an American hip-hop collective formed in Florida in 2008. Raider Clan would form around the same time as other hip-hop groups, such as Odd Future and ASAP Mob. These groups would explode in popularity in the early 2010s due to the influence of the internet and brought many prominent members from these groups into the mainstream. Raider Clan would be one of the first groups to integrate an early 3-6 Mafia and Memphis style into their music, which was a style Travis also cited as an influence, alongside KMB, A Tribe Called Quest, Pete Rock, and most importantly, Gravediggers. Travis would mention in a later interview that whenever he's making rap music, he's making Gravediggers records in his head. The similar styles would lead to Lil Ugly Mane collaborating with key members Space Ghost Perp and Denzel Curry on a number of songs. Around this time, Space Ghost Perp was set to be signed to a major label. Travis decided to go on a different path. Lil Ugly Mane would officially release his debut mixtape, Players Circle, on the 1st of February 2011. The album continued the trend of the Memphis revival, rapping with a flow similar to Styles beforehand. Although the production is a far cry in quality from what Travis would go on to produce, it's a good proof of concept of what the Lil Ugly Mane project would go on to become. 2012 would see the release of Little Ugly Main's debut album Mr. Thug Isolation, which would go on to become one of the most critically acclaimed hip-hop albums of the 2010s. The album would be entirely produced by Travis Miller and would include features from common collaborators Dental Curry and Super Sort of Human. Little Ugly Main would pitch his voice down for the vocals on the album, contributing to the mystery and fear caused by the project, influenced by horrorcore pioneers Gravediggers. Lyrical themes on the album include extreme violence and braggadocious bars, obviously originating from a villainous character created by Travis rather than Travis himself. Many see these lyrics as a parody of common hip-hop tropes, as many of the bars push the envelope of conventional hip-hop lyricism to an almost absurd level. Something that remains unique to this day is the sample-heavy and intense production on the project. Travis would describe his production style in an interview shortly after the release of the project explaining that he's constantly looking for samples from anything that makes noise, including but not limited to old VHS tapes, a parking lot, YouTube and older synthesizers. Around this time, Travis would often challenge himself by choosing a song and forcing himself to make a beat out of something sampled from it. This resulted in an album that is chock full of unique and satisfying samples. When creating the beats, Travis would use the program Fruity Loops, however, would record the beats live to tape before rapping over them. The album's cover is also worth noting. Although there are two versions, both include a mismatch of distorted graphics and over-the-top fonts, which creates a visual that goes hand-in-hand hand with the music. Graphic design is another passion of Travis, who mentioned in an interview that creating graphics for the album art or t-shirt designs is as, if not more fun than creating the music itself. The album quickly gained a cult following and has continued in the conversation of greatest rap album of the 2010s to this day. This same year would see the release of a few other projects, although under different aliases. The projects would include a free jazz album named Thug Isolation, 
under the name Dale Krugler. An EP was Super Sort of Human named Supersonic, and most notably the EP Uneven Compromise, which is a conceptual EP which explores themes of violence, tropes within hip hop, corporatism affecting art, as well as a lengthy and detailed verse about somebody's heroin addiction leading them to murdering their children. Travis would remain ultra quiet after these releases, as he would completely unplug himself from the internet in May of 2012. This would continue for a few months. In a later interview, Travis would explain his absence, as being an attempt to reconnect with the physical aspects of music. He explained how he missed a time before the internet, where finding a new artist or band felt more personal than it does via the internet. And although he commended the internet as being a great tool in the creation of music, he believed it led to certain aspects of life being lost. During this time, Lil Ugly Main would tease the creation of a physical newsletter for his new projects. This, however, wouldn't come to fruition. Travis would continue to voice his dislike for the attention he was beginning to get in the same year as he made a Facebook post exclaiming that after a few collaborations and another mixtape, he would retire the Lil Ugly Main project due to the fame he was beginning to receive. The Lil Ugly Main project would be officially retired with the release of the single On Doing a Good Deed in which Travis explains his inspirations, own experience making hip hop as a hobby, and his decision to quit after all the attention through the lyrics on the single. In 2013, Lil Ugly Main would continue to release projects to his band camp, some of which has new material, and others included unreleased songs from Lil Ugly Main's back catalogue. The most prolific of these releases is Lil Ugly Main's Three Sides of the Tape trilogy. These records are described to be compilations of music made by Travis that he either lost, hated or wasn't received well when it was played for other artists. The first two volumes of this project are songs recorded from 2008 to 2011, sticking to the Memphis style of production Travis was known for at that particular time. The final instalment of the trilogy, The Third Side of the Tape, which was released in 2015, is said to be music created from 1999 to 2012 and is the most varied of the three genre-wise. The tape combines hip-hop beats, grunge, black metal and electronic style beats and still manages to stay coherent as an entire project. 2015 would also see the release of Little Ugly Main's final album, Oblivion Access, which would be a far cry production-wise and theme-wise from Mr. Thug Isolation. Production-wise, the album would feature instrumentals that were far more experimental and cut ties with his earlier Memphis-influenced style. Lyrically, the album would also differ from Mr. Thug Isolation. Rather than playing a braggadocious, violent character, Lil Ugly Mane becomes bleak and depressed, rapping about his ugliest emotions and being trapped within his own head. Travis would explain in a later interview that the album differed due to the fact he was trying to release his records in a sequential narrative structure, which led him to begin to resent his earlier projects. As he continued to grow up as a person, he decided it was more important and creatively freeing to make whatever he felt like making, hence Oblivion Access. After this album, Lil Ugly Main became quiet as a project. Travis would continue rapping, however, and in 2016 formed a rap collective with contemporaries Wiki and Antoine named Secret Circle. Secret Circle would begin to release a few singles which were available online. The group even led to the only Lil Ugly Main video interview, which as a viewing experience is essentially an hour of begging Antoine to let Travis fucking talk for five minutes. Definitely Great. like, Yo, he bro. got like taken down by a dog. Like, if I got taken by, by a dog, I'll... I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, but I mean him. The group would come to an end in 2018 as Antoine would receive numerous sexual assault allegations, leading to Lil Ugly Main disbanding the group due to Antoine's treatment of women. Around the same time, Travis would also occasionally collaborate with members of Goth Boy Click, making a few beats for them under the previously mentioned alias Sean Kemp. 2017 would see the release of another solo album named Flick Your Tongue Against Your Teeth and describe the present under the alias Bedwetter, which continues the lyrical themes of Oblivion Access. The production legitimately sounds like a lonely, rundown block of flats with its buzzing ambience, which is accompanied by lyrics about alcoholism, depression, and self hatred. The Lil Ugly Main moniker will return in 2021 with his most recent album, Volcanic Bird Enemy and the Voiced Concern. Travis would describe this album as a culmination of the various styles and genres Travis has worked with over the years into a legible album, free of the constraints placed on him by the popularity of Mr. Thug Isolation all those years ago. The album continues with the trend of Travis's sample heavy production, however includes many alternative rock influences including shoegaze and grunge. Breakbeats are commonly sampled on this project. Travis later described that the usage is due to his love of breakbeats. He explained how the imperfect sound of a man in the 60s playing the drums packed into a 4 bar loop 
has become so recognisable and integral to modern music that it offers familiarity to the listener. He also explained how it sounds cool. Vocally, Travis opts to sing for many of the songs. I'll be the first to admit his vocal range isn't amazing, however it doesn't take away from the production at all and remains consistent and satisfying throughout. Travis Miller has proved time and time again his unbelievable depth and range as an artist, able to meld genres, conceptuality and alternate characters to create a unique and diverse discography. I guess this is the culmination of when you truly make music because you want to. Not bound by the shackles of popularity and trends, you can truly let yourself be free creatively. Travis Miller has embodied this throughout his career, and I hope he continues, whether Little Ugly Mane as a project is put to rest after his latest release, and when we're certain we haven't heard the last of Travis Miller, and I can't wait to see what's next.